In this project, we will build an IoT based project in which ESP8266 monitor its own battery level using Blink IoT Cloud. We can monitor the sensor data as well as battery charging or discharging status along with battery voltage and percentage. So, we can recharge it on time. This can be easily done using a voltage divider circuit and the analog input on the Node MCU ESP8266 board. Here for the demonstration, we will build an IoT weather station using DSTW temperature and humidity sensor, ESP8266 development board, and Blink IoT cloud for remote monitoring. The whole system is powered by a single 3.7 volt lithium ion battery. This battery can power no MCU board for around 10 hours. We need to charge the battery again using the TP4056 charging module. But sometimes I forgot to charge and the whole system is down. So, to overcome this problem, I thought of adding a battery monitoring system to the same project. In our earlier battery status monitoring system, we can only monitor battery voltage and percentage. But now, with the help of the Blink IoT, we can directly notify the users remotely when the battery percentage is below a threshold value. We can check the temperature and humidity sensor data along with the battery voltage and battery percentage and both the charging and discharging keys on the smartphones or computer dashboard from anywhere in the world. You will need the following components for the IoT based weather and battery level monitoring system project. Noor MCU ESP8266 development board. DSTW temperature and humidity sensor. 0.96 inch OLED display TP4056 charging module 200k ohm register Few jumper cables and breadboard You can purchase all the components online from the link provided in description A lithium ion battery or ELI ion battery is a rechargeable battery They are commonly used for portable electronics and IoT devices in a lithium ion battery, ions move from the negative electrode through an electrolyte to the positive electrode during discharge and back when charging. It uses an intercalated lithium compound at the positive electrode and graphite at the negative electrode. Most of the lithium ion batteries have a nominal voltage of 3.7 volt. When the battery charges to full, the maximum voltage is 4.2 volt. If you see the manufacturer data sheet, then it is clearly mentioned that the cutoff voltage is 3 volt. It varies depending upon the battery type and applications. The battery I am using has a discharge cut-off voltage of 2.8V. You can also get some batteries with a cut-off voltage of 2.5V. We will design a system to monitor DSTW temperature and humidity battery voltage along with charging and discharging status. For the microcontroller, we use Node MCU which has an ESP8266 Wi-Fi enabled chip. This Wi-Fi chip can connect to the Wi-Fi network and upload the data regularly to the server. The out pin of the DSTW sensor is connected to the D4 pin of node MCU. The SCL and STA pins are connected to D1 and D2 pins. Whereas, BCC and GND of DSTW sensor and OLED are connected to 3.3V and GND pins respectively. You can use the TP4056 module to charge the battery as it is the best suited for battery management applications. The ESP8266 chip can only support the input analog voltage of 3.3V, but battery voltage goes up to 4.2V, hence we have to form a voltage divider network to lower the input voltage. The battery maximum voltage is 4.2V and cutoff voltage is 2.8V. Anything lesser than 3.3V will be easily supported by ESP8266 analog pin. We have to first step down the upper voltage level, the source voltage is 4.2V and there is a pair of 100k resistors. This will give an output of 2.1V. Similarly, the minimum voltage is 2.8V as a cut-off voltage which steps down to 1.4V using the same voltage divider network. Hence, both the upper and lower voltage is supported by ESP8266 analog pin. Here is a complete assembly of the project. This is the same connection as shown in circuit diagram. For testing, you can use a lithium ion battery of any capacity. For example, I am using a battery with a capacity of 2200 mAh. You can simply assemble the circuit on a breadboard. But to remove messy wiring and give a clean look, I designed a PCB prototype for this project. You can download the Garber file of my PCB design from the link attached below. The PCB looks like the image shown here. You can simply download the Garber file and order your custom PCB from PCBWay. 
visit the official official website go to instant create tab here you need to upload your cover file to the website and place an order i prefer pcv way for ordering custom pcvs pcv way is a place that brings manufacturer and customers together they have more than a decade of experience in this field of fabrication prototyping and assembling pcvs pcv way have proved their focus to their customers need in terms of cost effectiveness delivery and quality and this can be proved by their outstanding customer reviews in order to monitor the sensor data and battery data on Blink IoT server, you first need to set up the Blink IoT Cloud dashboard. To set up the Blink server, visit Blink Cloud. Create an account or simply sign in if you created the account earlier. Creating Blink New Template For creating a project, first you have to click on the new template. Enter a template name. I am giving it Smart IoT. Select the hardware board ESP866. The connection type will be Wi-Fi. You can add a description of your project if required. Click on Done. Now the template is created. Here are two important things that you should remember. One is template ID and another one is device name which is required in the time of programming. Creating new Blink Data Stream A data stream is like a pipeline or channel. The data will be sent or received through these data channels. In a single project or template, there can be multiple data streams. In our project, we are receiving four data, temperature, humidity, battery voltage, and battery percentage. So, in this project, we created four data stream. Click on the new data stream. Now, choose a virtual pin. Now, you have to give a name for every data stream. After that, you have to choose virtual pins for data stream. For temperature, humidity, battery voltage, and battery percentage, I choose virtual pin V1, V2, V3, and V4 respectively. I choose the data type as double. You also need to set units for data stream as per the variable. Choose the degree centigrade for temperature, the percentage for humidity and battery portion, then volt for battery voltage. Also set the minimum and maximum values for the data streams. Creating events on Blink for notification alerts. Events are used for notification alert system. So here I am creating events to monitor battery percentage. If the battery portion reaches below the threshold value, an event is triggered and notification is sent to your mobile phone. So to create an event, click on the add event. Enter the event name. For me, it's battery low. Choose your event color. I am selecting red. Select the type of event. I am choosing critical. Enter the description of your event. Now go to the notification tab. Enable notification. Then select push notification to device owner every one minute. Click on save. So we have successfully created our first events. After that, move on the web dashboard. In this section, you will be able to see some widgets for making your cool looking web dashboard. For showing the value of temperature, humidity, battery percentage, and battery voltage, I have selected four causes. But you can choose any widget according to your project. Now, change the setting of the label. In settings, you have to give a name to the widget and you have to choose the data stream with which the widget will be connected. After setting up the widgets, click on the save button to save the entire project. That's all for setting up the Blink IoT dashboard. We will set up the Blink mobile dashboard after uploading the program code. Here is the source code for the IoT based weather and battery status monitoring system using ESP8266. But first, install the required libraries in your Arduino ID. DST.ES library, Blink library, Adafruit SST1306 library, Adafruit GFX.ES library. Now, open your Arduino ID. Go to File, Examples, Blink, Blink Agent, ESP8266 Agent. Just copy the code provided below and paste it into your Arduino ID. Do not make any changes to other files. You just need to replace the Blink template ID and Blink device name which is available in the Blink template. Simply, after making necessary changes, upload the code to node MCU ESP8266 to Valley Board. Download the Blink application into your mobile, available for both Android and iOS. After installing the application, log into your account. Turn on the developer mode if it is not turned on by going into your profile. Click on Add New Device. Click on Ready. Choose the Wi-Fi which is created by the Node MCU. Give the Wi-Fi credentials of the router with which you want to connect the Node MCU. Click on Continue. Now the board will connect to the router if the given Wi-Fi credentials are true. Click on Continue. Provide your device name and click Continue. Select your template then click on Done. Ok, great. Finish and exit. 
So that's all for the mobile dashboard setup. Now you can see the data of your Blink device in your mobile app and in the web dashboard as well. Reconfiguring Wi-Fi credentials and device without hard coding. To reconfigure the Wi-Fi credentials on the new Blink platform, you don't have to hard code the device. Under device settings, choose the configure device. Open to configure your device to the new Wi-Fi network. Alternatively, you can also press the flash button on Node MCU for 10 seconds to erase Wi-Fi credentials from EVROM. Then, you can reconfigure the Wi-Fi credentials again by adding it as a new device. The ESP8266 will try connecting to the Wi-Fi network. Once it connects to the Wi-Fi network, it will display the temperature, humidity and battery analog value along with the battery voltage and percentage. You can also monitor the temperature and humidity data on OLED display. Same data can be monitored through Blink IoT mobile app and web dashboard. As soon as battery portion reaches below threshold value, a notification is sent to the mobile device. For demonstration, I am using 30% as the threshold value. Here, it takes a long time to discharge this battery, so I am removing the battery and powering the Node MCU with micro USB cable. Now, notification is received on mobile phones, indicating battery getting low. The circuit is designed to fix 100k pairs of resistors. But most of the resistors have a tolerance of plus minus 5%. Because of these resistor values may be between 95k to 105k. As a result, the output voltage and the analog signal output both are affected. In order to fix this issue, you can compare the voltage difference between the serial monitor reading and the multimeter reading. Read the output voltage value at the TP4056 output terminal using a multimeter. Subtract the multimeter voltage value from the value obtained on serial monitor. In the following line of the code, add this calibration factor. This will fix any error in the voltage reading. So, this is how we can design an IoT based battery status monitoring system using ESP8266 and get the reading on Blink IoT Cloud. I hope the tutorial was helpful for you. If it was helpful for you, hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe to us. It's me, Asika, signing off for today. Catch you soon on the next one. Stay happy, stay safe.